the past academic year, we were very active in faculty development. In particular, we conducted an intensive search to fill up to six positions. We invited 17 candidates to campus to interview and present faculty talks. I'm pleased to introduce you to four outstanding scholars who will be joining us this fall. Finn Brunton fills a newly created position in digital environments and humanities. His PhD in modern thought is from the University of Aberdeen, and he was a postdoctoral fellow in media, culture, and communication at New York University. Here's an excerpt from his faculty talk on spam and the history of networked communities. The debates spam has inspired across the history of computer networks, the positions and strategies that it provoked, are still alive and unresolved today. To make spam's role clear, I'm going to give you some of its history, this thing which we rarely think of as having a history, and in the process describe why spam is important and why it demands our understanding. As you've no doubt noticed, this talk turns between two words with a very close relationship, spam and community. They're both difficult words to talk clearly about, words that are places of negotiation rather than fixed territories. They're places where people gather to talk and argue and state claims. The word community enables conversations. For Tonias and Durkheim, for instance, it's a means for discussing how we come to terms with industrial modernity. For communities of practice, it's about theorizing knowledge management. For the Chicago School of Sociologists and for McLuhan and those that followed, community can frame a conversation around theories of media and how we use them. Is community about location and face-to-face -face proximity? Or can it be established by a text message just as well as an embrace? Cliff Lampy is an award-winning teacher from Michigan State University and a product of our own PhD program. He received his SI doctorate in 2006 and he's now returning to the fold as an assistant professor in social computing. He studies how social systems and technical systems interact and the outcomes of participating in e-communities. In this excerpt, Cliff is setting up definitions for his talk on social media and the public sector. So my overall thing that I'm interested in, my, my big question is, how can we uh, enable collective action through socio-technical systems, right? How do we allow people to basically accomplish large-scale tasks by mediating their interaction with various information and communication technologies? Uh, so I think there's a couple of terms embedded in that that I want to express a little bit more. One is kind of this difference between socio-technical systems, social media, and social computing, right? And I think we've all heard these terms used fairly frequently and sometimes interchangeably. And I do make a, a few distinctions between some of them. So socio-technical systems, I often describe myself as a STS or socio-technical systems researcher. And I think that's a really good academic description because it does point to what I find compelling in this area, which is that social systems and technical systems interact and the product of that interaction is different than the individual sum of the two components right so you get something new basically that happens when you have social and technical systems interacting and I'm really interested in those novel types of interactions that are created from that social media now the problem with socio-technical systems is that only me and Tom use that term uh, for the most part so uh, so so it does have a wide scale so we often use I think social media as a more kind of layperson consumable term uh, that allows us to describe these set of things. And, and when I talk to, to a lot of practitioner audiences about what is social media, I often describe it as uh, mediated communication where there's uh, uh, no barriers between people and people are often engaged in a, a production of some sort, right? So it's unmediated in terms of uh, gatekeeping, but it's in a technical environment and usually involves creation of things like comments or pictures or whatever 4chan does or any of those types of things. Lionel Robert is joining us as an assistant professor of information in organizations. He earned his doctorate at the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. His primary research interest is in how the communication environment alters the impact and the development of teams. His secondary interest is the role of social networking on the acceptance and use of technology. Lionel has taught at the University of Arkansas and the University of Louisiana. His faculty talk concerned diversity in teams that operate in virtual environments. Decisions, as opposed to, to individuals, is that teams are supposed to have 
access to more information than individuals. Okay, if not, the coordination costs of, of using teams are, uh, there's no point in using the team. Now, that only comes to bear if those teams can integrate their, 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 uh, their information together, their knowledge. If they fail to do that, then they have no more benefit over an individual, and you incur the uh, coordination costs of having a team, right? That's the whole idea behind having teams. Julia Adler Milstein is receiving her PhD in Health Policy Management from Harvard, where she was twice awarded Certificates of Distinction in Teaching. Her research focuses on policy and management issues related to information technology and healthcare delivery. Just last week, the leading professional organization for health services researchers, Academy Health, announced that Julia was the recipient of their Outstanding Dissertation Award for 2010. She will be contributing to both the Information in Organizations and Health Informatics curricula here at SI. Her faculty talk described her research on the use of IT in electronic health records. When you actually look at the evidence, the empirical evidence to say, is this happening? Are these health IT solutions actually leading to improvements in quality and reductions in cost? Um, you know, we have a fairly limited but growing empirical evidence base. And, um, and the current evidence sort of suggests what, what may be a modest relationship between the use of IT and improvement in performance. Uh, but what's striking about this literature is the degree of heterogeneity that's out there. So they're clear that there are some places that have really figured out how to leverage health IT to make dramatic improvements in, in, in performance. And there are other places in which there is just no evidence of a relationship at all. And so I think the most critical, but really the most limited evidence is about what is required to realize gains from health IT. Um, and that is, uh, for me, where I've been sort of most excited to do uh, my work and where I you know, obviously believe that, that it's sort of most critical to be thinking about you know, what types of studies to design right now. I'm so pleased to say that these four are as excited to be coming to SI as we are to have them. They contribute directly to our goal of becoming the very best institution for the study and design of socially engaged information and computing systems.